The actions of Elon Musk's girlfriend and recent advances in artificial intelligence may have him rethinking the direction of his company Neuralink, which is developing an invasive brain computer interface system. Claire Boucher, mother of two of his children and otherwise known as the popular musician Grimes, recently posted on her social media that she was excited to get a custom Neurosity Crown, which is a non-invasive EEG system that uses brainwaves to help developers develop kinetic systems similar to what you would find in the telepathy of science fiction. In the same week, the popular YouTuber Jeff Delaney from Fireship shocked the programmer community by linking the Neurosity Crown to ChatGPT and demonstrated how mental prompts like imagining biting into a lemon could send the open AI system into a flurry of activity to actually serve the user using the crown. As BCI wearables gain stronger utility through AI and become more accepted in the main stream through influencers like Grimes as the next cool thing to be involved with, my question is, was Elon forming a whole company around a potentially dangerous neurosurgery the right choice if he wanted to get involved with brain computer interface? First, let's start with the obvious. An implantable BCI system will have much better data fidelity in a small area of the brain than any current surface wearables will. This would allow paralyzed patients to navigate cursors on a computer screen or control robotic arms with much more precise degrees of control. Neuralink has already demonstrated this with its monkey test subjects who have demonstrated the ability to move a computer mouse cursor with their mind alone. In comparison, Surface EEG wearables are much more constrained by random noise on the sensors and require strong electrical activity from the brain associated with predefined signals like flickering screens or imagining biting into a lemon. But neurosurgery is extremely risky. Neuralink has publicly admitted that quite a few of their monkeys have actually died in their initial experiments. Now don't get me wrong, I highly respect Neuralink's efforts and see animal testing as a necessary cost to the medical research that they are doing. But you do see how implanting artificial devices into the central nervous system is risky. The central nervous system, or the CNS, has its own blood-brain barrier, it's delicate, neurons have difficulty regenerating, and all this makes infections and inflammation to the CNS difficult to treat can wreak havoc in the brain and the body. No matter how sterile surgical conditions are, there's always the risk of infections or complications like inflammation that can cause brain damage. Neuralink wants to minimize this risk by using a custom robot for the surgeries, but you have to ask the question, is it really worth the risk, especially if you're not paralyzed? Even for paralyzed patients, there are other ways that they could communicate with their minds. Companies like Cognition and NextMind have demonstrated that surface level EEG can be used with flickering screen tags to help patients navigate speech programs and the internet. And recent research work like this paper, led from a Harvard scientist, shows that geometric shapes can be recognized from EEG through machine learning techniques, making possibilities of wearable EEG systems even more promising than we originally thought. Here on on Tech for Psych, I recently interviewed law professor Nita Farenhani, who argued that wearable systems are becoming increasingly powerful and put neurosurgery into question. Her opinions were widely circulated in her March 2023 book, Battle for Your Brain, and received press coverage from Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, and many others. I do see a future in which if it really did become incredibly safe and effective, you know, we could imagine a future in which people are using implanted technology for healthy individuals. But you know, we have 40 people in the world who are using implanted technology, whereas we could have millions to billions of people using wearable technology integrated into their everyday life. But as you have technology like um, cognition come to market and become more mainstream, there will be many, many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of patients for whom wearable brain technology will make a lot more sense than implanted technology. So I think people are starting to and will continue to take wearable brain technology so much more seriously than they did in the past. As a result of more immediate at-scale opportunities, wearable technologies may be able to bootstrap themselves into profitability much more quickly than Neuralink. Mary Lou Jepson's open water FNIR system has had similar long-term goals as Neuralink to create high-fidelity brain-computer interface systems, but their device is built out of materials readily available in the supply chain, and their non-invasive approach has gained much faster approval testing through regulatory bodies. The open water 
water system uses harmless red light and ultrasound to track blood flow in blood vessels of the brain. And as a result, open water is finding massive early success in detecting blood clots in stroke victims well before they reach the hospital within ambulances, which will save many lives and has huge economic opportunity that can propel them to much higher goals in the BCI space. Neuralink, in contrast, seems to be relying heavily on Elon's personal $100 million investment, as well as investments from his wealthy counterparts like Peter Thiel. Certainly, the company will be reimbursed for implantable surgeries from health insurance payments, but it's not clear yet how this will be hashed out and if it will actually able to get to the scale necessary to keep their highly trained staff paid. And this is still a step that they have not yet achieved as their initial bid was rejected by the FDA in March 2023 to test the brain chip implants in humans. This is falling behind other implantable BCI companies to include Synchron, who has implanted devices in half a dozen patients since 2019 with a device that is inserted through the jugular vein instead of through the skull, which is much less risky. But this is not to say that Neuralink is not aiming high. I find their goals very admirable. They're actually aiming a lot higher than the BCI companies around today because they are not just measuring the brain, but they actually want to aim for a direct interface with technology through an input-output system, meaning that the device would not just be able to detect brain waves, but it actually could communicate information to your brain from the internet or the external environment, which would be much more difficult than just the one-way brain data analytics that are going on right now. A great person to talk to who knows the Neuralink team quite well is Ryan Tanaka of the Neuropod YouTube channel. His attendance and coverage of the Neuralink press events have given him an inside look to the workings of Neuralink that I think very few people on the planet have. The main takeaway that I had was how passionate and how smart the Neuralink team is. Another thing that I was that I came to appreciate more was that they're really wanting this to be an available BCI for everybody. Every decision that they make is going for scale. They want to build their own surgical robots so that these can be implanted at scale. In the case of Neuralink, like there's so many technical challenges to overcome and the initial use is going to be all medical related. So because of that, I think like it will not get to major scale until a couple decades from now. Based on what Ryan said, it might be a while before we see some fantastic results from Neuralink in humans. And I think that they are missing out on some things because other companies like Brian Johnson's Kernel are positioned very well for some fantastic capabilities through AI in the near future. So there's a guy named Elon Musk, and he has a company, one of the many companies called Neuralink. So it'd be interesting to hear your kind of opinions about a very different approach that's invasive. Yeah, Elon and I, spoke about this a lot early on. A little less than a year after uh, Elon and I were engaged, I shifted Kernel to do non-invasive. With biohacking and brain data both trending in the mainstream right now, there's a lot of opportunity for wearables. Brian chose the path of wearables for his FNIRS helmet that tracks blood flow of the brain for that very reason. I personally see some fantastic possibilities using current BCI systems with AI in the very near future. For example, a Japanese team just demonstrated that with fMRI brain data alone, they could use generative AI to show what people were watching on a TV screen and create completely new images based on the brain's blood flow patterns. This breakthrough could apply to much cheaper FNIRs and EEG systems and could create the possibility of projecting our thoughts on a screen much earlier than we originally thought. Certainly within the BCI industry, information from implantables and wearables will feed on each other and improve the neuroscience on both sides. But with the wearable BCI industry heating up from influence like people like Nita and Jeff and Grimes, the general public is really waking up to the possibilities here. There's definitely some major shifts happening. NextMind, which is bought by Snapchat last year, Neurable will be pairing with a major headphone manufacturer this summer, and only time will tell, but I wanna know what you think. Make sure to leave your comments and questions below, and I'll certainly respond. There's a lot more coming in the coming months, and I'll see you next time.